Alright guys, this is going to be my first video for this channel. Um, I'm going to teach you guys how to make your photos look a little bit retro, kind of like vintage look. So the first thing you guys want to do is, uh, oh yeah, and I'm using uh, Adobe Photoshop CS3 instead of CS5. So um, I'm assuming everyone knows how to open up a file. Uh, go ahead and open it. And for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to paste in the actual file that I actually recently opened up. Alright, there. Um, now, uh, the first thing you guys, wanna, my, uh, you guys are going to want to do is, lo by looking at this photo, it looks a little too bright. Uh, the camera doesn't really seem too bright, but in person it looks pretty bright. Uh, you're going to want to go to Image. Go down to adjustments and change brightness and contrast, and and those kind of photos, it's a uh, little less bright and a little more contrasty. Okay, um, just change those levels with those little knob thingies, and go ahead and press OK. When you see that your photo looks a little dark, kind of kind of vintagey, almost not really. <laughs> All right, now you guys want to come over here. To your la uh, to your little tool place thing, and go ahead and click the last so. Come on, there it is, which is L. Um, until you look, see this little noose looking thing for the cowboys. Okay, <laughs> and what I like to do is I like to make the little um, edges a little dark, kind of faded dark. You know, like for the I'm not really sure. It just looks cool. It's like that little thing that they have for like the cameras like aperture or whatever but uh not really good in terms so anyway go ahead and just like draw around it doesn't have to be so perfect you see how like i'm not really that good at it right now but uh just you get the idea um go ahead and s just go around there not too close to the edges but not too far away from them either uh and you're gonna want to go up here to select now go ahead and hit select and go down to inverse. That's going to put in these little the dotted lines on the outside of the, the picture. Now you want to go down here. Okay, let me focus. To this little moon looking thing. I don't know. Go ahead and click that. And you guys want to go to levels. Alright, levels right here. Go ahead and click that. And you're going to get this little thing, okay? And you're going to either want to push up or down, depending on how you like it. So if you're looking at the picture right now, if I push down, you see how it gets kind of light, kind of whitish? That's also kind of retro, but it's a little too old for me. So I am going to push up and get it darker. So I see how it's getting dark, too dark, you know? Um... On the video, on the camera, it's a little over-exaggerated, but I am just going to leave it like that. Maybe a little less. And when you're done with that, just go ahead and press OK. And make sure you have the little preview uh, checkbox so that you can see what you're doing. Okay. Alright. So we're done with that. We did the uh, lasso thing. Um, now we're going to want to make the picture a little... Bold that you know how retro uh, retro vintagey pictures are a little bold. So you guys want it, that's gonna be done in the adjustments in the curves. So we're gonna make a new curves layer. Go back to that moon looking thing and go up to curves right here, right under the levels. We we're just there, and you're gonna make your own RGB curve. And looking at the picture. You know, make sure you have the preview uh, checkbox checked. You're going to go to red. For that, make an S with your curve. See how the picture is a little bit being modified, just a little bit, as I did that. So here's straight. Oh, crap. Made a new thing. Here's straight, kind of. And when I put more, you know, like that. So it kind of altered the picture just a little bit. Okay, so you want to make it kind of an S. Now you go back 
to here and go down to green and do the same exact thing, the kind of S looking shape. Looking at the picture again, uh, not too much, so it's getting there now. And you see how there's a lot of blue, now, uh, the blue is a little standing out. Uh, don't press OK, I mean, don't press OK yet. <laughs> Oops. And then go down to blue. And you can do the opposite with the blue. You're actually going to bring down the top part and bring up the bottom part. Not too much, okay? A little over exaggerating it there. But bring up the bottom part of the blue just a little bit and bring down the top part. So it looks kind of like that. And kind of tweak around with it. I'm doing mine really fast. So it's not too perfect. I might not actually put that much in the bottom part there, but that's pretty much there. I might add a little, I might go back to the red channel and fix that a little bit. Maybe that last thing. Okay, so that's that. And when you're done with it, go ahead and then press OK. And you made yourself a new curve layer. Okay, so it looks almost done at this point but I'm not done with it so what I'm going to do is make it a little more old, a little more authentic by making another layer which is going to be a uh, go back to this little moon shape thing and up to gradient map go ahead and click the gradient map and you see how it's in black and white right now go ahead and click that and go to where it says violet and orange okay and hit that button and everything's gonna go really violet and orange go ahead and press OK of course that's not how you want your picture to be so you're gonna make sure on your layers place area you have that selected the gradient map and you go to fill and you either put more of that or less of that so looking at the picture, let me zoom out here, I'm putting less of that and more of that in the fill. I'm not really sh I, I just play, I don't know what opacity actually means, but playing around with both of them, that actually, actually kind of helps. But I put more, actually I'm going to put opacity at 100, or maybe at 89 and the fill is a little less that's too much looks a little fady there but I think honestly that actually looks pretty darn good so I'm gonna keep it at that so I'm gonna now make a new gradient map same process up to gradient map and I'm gonna choose black and white and I'm going to make sure that's selected over here. And I'm going to make sure my fill for black and white is really low. But I want to have that tint of black and white in there. So opacity maybe up to 50%. But the fill maybe down to maybe around 20 or maybe even like 15-ish. Or 16. Same thing. So it doesn't really look like there's a difference. But to, you know, trail train eye, there is a little, much, a little bit of a, you know, black in there black and white in there so it's kind of it's almost done on the camera you know these edges are really dark but um, I'm gonna put the picture the final picture at the end of this video so anyway let's go back um, so this is kind of done right now but I want to add something else this is optional you don't have to but I'm gonna add noise to make it look like it came from a you know vintage camera not like a you know $2,000 DSLR. So I'm going to go to filter, down to noise, and add noise. Um, and I did a I made a mistake there. There's, see how it's all white? Uh, cancel. Make sure you select the background okay, on the layers and then do that again. Filter, down to noise, and add. Okay, now you see there's something there. Now I can use this little square thing I have and pinpoint where I want to put uh, when I want to where where I want to put this preview right here so if I want to put that on the top of this tower right here you see it 
right, just click there and right there is going to be the top of the tower so it kind of zooms in and you can actually see the noise in depth so I'm going to put it to 100% and I'm going to put the noise I'm going to actually keep the noise at 17 because 7 yeah, seven just 17 flat because it looks pretty good at 17 it's not too noisy yet it's not too like crisp uh, maybe 17 is a little too much still so I might actually just bring it down to 15 at least you know that there's noise you know and uh, instead of Gaussian I'm gonna put it at uniform and go ahead and press OK and there you go it's pretty much done and uh, you know I could have done a little more tweaking with the curves I could have done a little more tweaking with the uh, with the uh, levels on the um, uh, the filter with the purple and orange and the black and white but all in all that's on you guys you should know where to put those things so um, but in general it's pretty much done it looks kinda like it I could have lessened the noise but um, but yeah, it's done. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put the end fi uh, the final product on the end of this video, so you don't see this. Cause this I'm looking at the screen. It, this part right here is super dark. But um, on the computer monitor, I can see it's actually pretty good. So I'm going to end it right now. Uh, make sure you save it. You can either uh, press Control Save right now, okay, and it'll make a new photo, okay. I like a new file so it's a copy of the original file or you can just go ahead and uh, go down to the key here and control shift E and all your layers will become one big layer and when you save it it's not gonna make a new um, it's not gonna make a new file it's gonna apply the uh, edit the changes onto the original file so you won't have the original file anymore but that's what I'm going to do since I already have a lot of these pictures so I'm just going to press OK make sure you want to keep it at max well I where I typically put it is at maximum 12 quality 12 but uh, you can you know if you're going to go Facebook or whatever or Flickr you want to keep it low maybe but uh, I keep it at large so uh, press OK and it's ready to go takes a while but um, that's about it so uh, thank you for watching and bye bye.